Hello folks and welcome back to the second and potentially final map of this best of three between Asurus Gaming and Falco. The first map concluded in favour of Asurus and the second map, well, boys, I am worried. As Asurus, they are pretty much beasts on Mirage, it's very much their map. So I really hope we get to see a strong start here from Asurus as, well, things are pretty hairy on the B side right now. The USP of Lato is firing volley after volley. Pulls out a double kill here to force to 1v3. It's all on our good man, Numeritos. What can he do? There's one now looking for a second, but it won't come through. Falco will take charge and pick themselves up their first pistol in this second map. So clearly, a little bit of fight left in them yet. But before we get ahead of ourselves, let's remember the pistol results in map one. We did see a good performance from Falco, but the buy rounds what tells all, and that's where they fail to deliver. Well, we have to see what happens in Mirage now. But with that said, that's the intro out of the way. I hope everyone in the chat is doing okay as well. Let me know who you think is going to take this map. I want to see some support for either Falco or Surus. I want to know exactly where people stand. Slow and steady seems to be the approach once more here. Asurus not making any rampant rushes just yet. Going to be, for the most part, spread out across the map. They do have two players in the underpass. Two players over on towards A. With one player top mid. Now, if anything, you know, there is to go by here. We can expect to see someone like Numbers head back towards the top mid and grab the bomb. Or his teammate, Reversive, will go and do it. As they do try and split out on towards the A site. Now, so far, so good. They've done pretty good work with the smoke blocking of jungle, and meanwhile securing the kill onto the aggressive CT play that was on Palace. The problem they've got is CT, with no smoke there, or at least put down currently to block that. That's going to prove to be rather difficult for them. Also, they don't have the bomb still. No one went back to get it, which is kind of what we hinted at at the start of the round. And that's a huge problem, because it really runs down the clock now. When you've got three players in CT like you have, things are going to get messy, and unfortunately... When things you know, turn into that sort of scenario, what is favoured, quite heavily so, is, is firepower. And unfortunately, that's where Falco really are going to reign supreme. But they pop a ramp, and Falco don't get aggressive at all. They sit back and make the interesting decision of actually playing for the retake, which I'm not so sure about, because you actually have to push close and personal to do that. And the crossfire between Mayer and, and Noxie is there, combined with their player and Palace as well. It's going to be a very hard push to make. You see what happens here? They make a play, and as they do, they get picked apart one by one as the CZs will rip you up close range. For Falco, the win condition there was pushing as the bomb was planted, and that's where they fell short. For Surus, they will fight back, they'll get themselves one, they'll equalize, and now they look to find their second and take a very early lead. Molly, over on towards window, will force an early pick for them. So far, so good. Noxie. Just picking them apart now. Along with his teammates, they will just contact themselves on towards the A site. No real questions.
I'm curious, we're seeing a lot of discussion around different teams in the South American Qualifier and where they are going to place. So, if there was ever a time to answer a question to Twitch chat, now would be the time. Who do you think is going to qualify through this close qualifier? Obviously, it rewards... Two America minor slots, so... Not many chances when you think about the number of teams entered into it. Of course, 16 teams competed in the first round of the CQ. This specific matchup is in our second round. A quarter-final. The winner of this best of three will have to play either 9Z or W7M, which will be a, another interesting best of three. And to be honest, the rest of the bracket's looking pretty spicy now. It's, you know, Sharks versus Ints. That's going to be a great game. And also, I think, you know, if we're looking at, let's say, a uh, Falco even versus something like 9Z, I think that could be a good matchup as well. But let me know who you think is going to take the qualifier, obviously, based on the teams remaining. Obviously, that is Sharks, INTZ, 9Z, W7M, Falco, and a Cirrus. A lot of faith in a Cirrus, it seems. And W7M see a lot of support for them. Not too surprised, though. Hey, Brian, I certainly appreciate. I uh, have not got the perfect pronunciation of the team names down. I do try my best, though. <laughs> Level Warrior 500, this would be the second best of three. But this is quite common then, it's actually quite a good way of doing it for, for these CQs because it gives us an opportunity to take it a little bit more casual and talk to the community. Kind of, We talked about it a little bit in the last game so I won't go on it again too much but I'm sure for those of you who are there can, uh, can explain it as well in the chat. But basically it's just a great way to drive a bit of community interaction. We made a point that some of the, the differing communities in CS actually have some really passionate fans that a lot of people often overlook. So it gives us a good chance, for us cast at least, to also talk to those passionate fans, which is always great. Good to get some interesting opinions. I feel like uh, Yakuza is about to hit me with a big question, he just said, Dear Caster, and that's all he said. I feel like there's got to be a question in there somewhere, buddy, you've just, you've not asked it. <laughs> with that said, the pistols were all dealt with fairly comfortably from Masurus, they were... Just howling in their stride. Now we get to see what the buyer run is going to be like for Falcao. Now, the only thing to mention is that the utility is super limited. Like, they are really running low on it, so it's going to be an issue. And they've already burnt a smoke just from Guto deciding to run into his underpass and then jump up again. So it's it's not super ideal. They're really just wasting away the utility. That could be problematic. Still, though, not a single kill to come through just yet. We will see the flash towards top connector. Once more, no push to come through. Guto with first blood. So far, so good at least. Falco will put the right foot forward, but the B play will come through, and that's where Delbany has the pressure on his shoulders. The flash is perfect, but it's just a second before Reversive made the push, and that's going to be a problem. It gives up that first kill, makes it to a second as well. The flames will bite back and Secure the trade frag for him, but is it too little too late? I mean, we're already in a 2 on 4. There are 50 seconds on the clock. The bomb is now dropped upon the B site. And there you have it. Lasso is going to finish things off, and that will secure a 2 3 scoreline and bring Falcal back into the action as they get onto their buy. Our level warrior, I appreciate the love, my friend. It's, uh, it's definitely well appreciated. How long have I been casting for today? Uh, this would be, yeah, so second best of three. It's 3 a.m. in the UK, though, so it's like the time zone's kind of awkward. I didn't have a chance, um, I didn't have a chance to, like, reset the sleeping pan, so I could be a little bit more sort of, like, uh... I guess prepared would be the best way of putting it. 
<laughs> so it's definitely been a long night. We're currently, yeah, it's currently 3 a.m. But it's all good. We do it f because we love it, so I can't even complain. He doesn't want to talk about Counter-Strike after all. El Timo Gordo says, Asurus is currently dominating the South American scene as Fury did last year, so it's no wonder having Asurus classified as to the, to the minor. Yeah, no, I, I pretty much agree with you. I think, you know, not putting Asurus down as a contender for the minor would be uh, quite a shock when looking at the teams in the South American lineup. Oh, here we go again with asking me to say things. It's, it's super risky, man. Like, I've, I've done this before and, and said some interesting things. Let's just say that. Um... <laughs> Either way, quick picks come through. CT side just obliterated there, especially into CT, actually. The SG just ripping their heads apart through the CT smoke because they just peered through the top of it thanks to their position in Palace. Then they get a simple plant, and that will pretty much mean Guto is stuck. There's nothing he can really do here now. He just has to walk away from the round and accept that Asuras have really brought the fight on their T side. That was a pretty flawless round from them, all things considered. Only playing not to get a frag is Noxie. Ibz, Ibzil. I'm not quite sure what you're saying, but I think it's something to do with time zone and uh, calling me a madman, which, well, you know, these are the things we do, right? It's, uh, I tell you what, if you want to cast, uh, the biggest thing I'd say is you got to love the game because you're going to have to cast at some crazy times, but you do it because you love it. Not a crafty little deagle shot. Not too sure if they'll be able to repeat it. Just as I say that, though, they put reverse it down to 10 HP. Gotta be so careful here now. Grouping up by far, probably the best decision here. Ooh, Guto at it again! Smite down reversive with just another Deagle headshot there. Ooh, another one for Numeritos. He's loving it. Quick tray comes in from Noxie as well. We'll mean the B site has been taken, but this round's definitely a little sketchy. I definitely think, yeah, you just want to get the bomb down now. Use Noxie to hold market. And then just try and figure out the rest together. The upside you know is that they're all on pistols. I don't think they know that necessarily there's a scout in play, but that's not really going to be a huge issue for them. Lato has got out, though, through the smoke, and, I mean, Noxie just doesn't know. He's been digged from behind, which is a little awkward. It looks like... I was going to say, it looks like he knew what was coming, but... He still got took down by the Deagle in the end. Unfortunately, with the Deagle, a shot to the body will do a significant chunk of damage anyway. And after the Juliab with the AK that was picked up by Heat's teammate, he was just too low to tank it. Unfortunate, but a yeah, great outcome for Falco. The fact they're able to collect around there and push themselves up to three is, is huge for them. Allows them to not only try and get a little bit closer to equalizing and have a bit more fight in this game, but also feel the double up setup now moving forward, which actually may well be a uh, saving grace for them a little bit here, because they needed to make some changes to their buy round in order to break a source. Right now, the rounds they're winning have either been pistol rounds or sort of like anti-force buys, where they've had to make something stick with deagles and stuff. Double up might be something uh, that they can you know, change a bit of rhythm with. Works well, they actually get first pick with it. Unfortunately, it is an instant trade, though. Both orps still in play. Delbody hungry for reversive. Ooh, the timing. Could have been an easy kill if he just held down for a second, but unfortunately, not going to happen.
I like the fact they dropped the bomb there to Max. If they can flash over to CT, he can just walk in and plant the ramp here. He knows that Moxie's got himself covered on short, so really little to no risk there. Given that Falco don't like to push through CT as well, we've established that early on in this game. Now, of course, it leaves them in CT, and it's kind of like that early round that we saw, where they're now stuck in CT and they kind of just have to make a push. They've got no real way to get out, and that's kind of the problem for them. Yeah, I think they're going to have to save now, back away. We'll put a Cirrus up to five rounds here. At least an AWP and an AK save, though. Benefit to be found there, for sure. Julian Cop, that's correct. My name is is Ryan. Downside for Falco is that they no longer have that secondary up. It is going to be Guto on the Deagle, which. Well, I guess it's it's sort of similar, right? It can, it can get the one digs. It's just uh, not quite got the scope on the end of it. We'll have to see if he can continue to deliver here. Not the greatest of starts for a serious though. Losing Maya very early on, within just 20 seconds of things getting going. But I like this. Setting themselves up for a window boost here. Not going to get anything immediately from it. But if they can get the CT, the B crunch could be incredible. Now, there is information being found, though, from Delbany, and that's going to be an issue. Obviously, using the smoke there to get the gun, if you didn't notice, he could just see it through the shadows. So, he dropped the smoke on it, just enough so that he could run down and pick it up safely. Oh, basically the upshot as well, that's even better. Using the nade then to get some extra damage on Noxie. A lot of information gathered, it's, it's a win-win all round. Noxie should never be able to land a shot like that, though. You should never be able to wide swing with a player on platform the way he was, but instead he gets away with it, swings out nice and wide. Bangs out a quick kill. Lato from CT, well, at least we had to secure the trade. Not really had to see anyone in Palace, but don't worry, nox has got that covered anyway. And he's just three on three now, perfectly even. CT will be smoked off. It's a little bit of a deep smoke though. Thankfully, jungle will be mollied as well. The molly should have made sound there, which made Guto position known, unfortunately. Was he just tagged through a box? He was, wasn't he? That is incredible. Lato knows he's there, so we'll return fire anyway, but the damage was done. Lato's 8 HP. He's 21 HP. They can't surely push the site now. Bear in mind, Max also has a molly, which, in my mind, it seals the deal. I think this round is now unwinnable. A surprising amount of people are asking for my Instagram. Is, uh, I don't actually know, know the answer, but is Instagram more popular in, like, Spain or Brazil or, like, just sort of... Is that a, is that a more popular thing than, like, Twitter? Or, or what's the... What is the go-to platform? Julian, appreciate the kind words, buddy. Glad to have you with us, supporting... The Miner, of course. I'll tell you what, the Major is going to be incredible. Really looking forward to seeing what Starlighter can bring to the table. Why well, not that? The actual Miner, including the Qualifiers, have delivered some really impressive matches. Even looking at South America, it really has been quite the exciting series so far. A couple of great games, including this one, to be honest, as well, but... I've got to note the 25 to 23 we witnessed earlier on in best of three just before. That was really quite something. Why do you call them Noxie? Um, it just kind of looks like the best way to pronounce it. And when I listen to another English cast to cast it, I it also heard them kind of go for the Noxie. Uh, so that's kind of the approach that I take on it. Um, is is Noxie uh, not the right way? I mean, let me know. I'll, I'll happily try and pronounce it the right way. That said, B site pretty much overrun. Will be just two pistols and AWP remaining. Falcon, of course, little to play with there, so just going to try and save that AWP more than anything. Top one IG, top two HLTV. 
Oh, you want to say you want to like, get back to asking me to say that that sentence again? It's uh, I, I gotta like Google Translate it, see what it actually means before I say it. You know, I like having my job, so gotta pay my rent somehow. And if uh, can't be getting banned from Twitch for saying some accidentally totally offensive or racist things now. <laughs> oh, I can't even say what like Google Translate doesn't even want to help me out. It, it could mean anything. It thinks it's uh. Not even thinks it's in Catalan. Maybe, maybe it is. Maybe you're not Spanish. I thought, kind of assumed it was Spanish, but maybe, maybe that's not the case. Oh, Google's not helping me out either, so I'm, I'm gonna play it safe and I'll avoid saying it just in case. Looks like we are going to see another bee all in play. The Molotov's burning up the van. Likewise, a smoke towards bench as well. He will throw, let rip, and well, so far so good. Falco have dropped every single player. Really, no questions asked. They've just won out every single duel. Leaving just Noxie one man standing up against five. He'll be coming in through apps, and well, he'll be spotted in just a moment's time as the utility. It's fairly obvious where it's coming from, and he walks dead set into it. Oh, it means send them home. Okay. I feel like, uh, you know, I don't want to... Uh, I tried... You could say something like, uh, I'm trying to think of a way to structure a sentence now that makes sense. Apparently I've just lost the ability to speak at 3am. Who knew? Um, thing is, they're both great teams, so I'm, I'm going to sit on the fence. And uh, I don't want to send either of them home. I mean, one of them's got to go home, right? Like, we know that for a fact. I think on paper it, it's probably going to be Falco, unfortunately, but uh... Hey, you never know, they might get a, a huge upset here. Yeah, I, Google Translate kind of ruined it, unfortunately. <laughs> Do you cast FIFA too? Ah, sometimes, for fun. CS is kind of my, my main game though. Lato, great early shot on towards Noxie there, just going to be opening it up with the orb once more. What's interesting is that Sirius have really reverted to this default heavy style, which is presence towards top mid. Bomb is always dropped towards that sort of B-Halls, back of T-spawn area. They always have one or two players in underpass, and the rest of their players are then dedicated towards holding through the A area of the map. It's kind of very uh, standard play from a Sirius, to be honest. Lovely double opener, though. That all comes from just smart positioning. Unfortunately, BLD in shadow will be good for one, but it's a tradable position. And that's where you just kind of have to roll the dice, swing out, see what you can do. But fortunately, the result is as we expect. He simply is just traded by the T side. Now we're going to see the numbers punched in. The bomb will go down. And from there, it's going to be on Guto and Delbany to debate if they want to try and go for the retake. So far, so good, at least. Guto going to get one, but... Unfortunately, it's just a kill. There really isn't much more to it. Of course, just trying to stay alive now. As we head into round 13 here. Just going to wrap this one up, Delbody. Ah, he's going to get himself the exit again, but... At this point... Sirius can pretty much cover their losses anyway, so it's not a huge issue. Yanka, appreciate the kind words, man. No problem at all. I think uh, it's, a, it's a great way of doing these sort of these qualifier casts. It's always been a success for me, so I'm uh, always going to keep going back to that same format of just a little bit of chat interaction, a little bit of casting as well. I think it provides uh, a different experience for you folks at home rather than watching your your sort of standard cast where you're you're just sort of hearing the not necessarily the same old thing, but something slightly different at least. A bit more of that interaction, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. I can't really speak properly, I apologise. With that said, deep nade in towards top con. I like that. Great way to get an early bit of damage done. With the connector smoke and the top mid smoke as well, 
Now, he's going to delay any sort of attempt at a mid-take from Asuris. Now, again, it's that default star, right? The only change they've made is they've got two players top mid and one player underpass, rather than the two players underpass and one player top mid. So they just kind of made that little swap around. Of course, what I'd suggest for you folks at home who are watching is just really keep an eye on the map for a second. Because one of the problems that Asuras have had on their T side is that they've really been forgetting about the bomb. They've been winning sites sometimes, but then the bomb has been so far out that the win condition for Falco has, has been restored based on the fact the bomb has been planted. So it's definitely something that we really do sort of have to keep an eye on, is, is actually making sure that they just keep track of where that bomb is. This time around, it's been picked up. Carry of Armeyan over on towards this B site, or at least in towards B apps. They're thinking about making this push, but only time will tell. 30 seconds on the clock. I think it's safe to say they are locked into B now. Push comes through. One and done. Man, and numbers will get themselves their kills, but we will see a bit of damage done towards short as well. Now, 1962, buddy, you got to get on speed. Get yourself over to the site because you need to support your teammates. There's 15 seconds left and they need to plant. W is trying to do one thing and one thing only. Stay alive. Looks like Mayan, though, has done just enough. His numbers can then hold the cross and... Just like Numeritos does, he will finish things off and gather us nine rounds on the board for a service. Uh, Chris, Chris Stiff 93 uh, Unfortunately, just based on time zones, uh, I had to do a bit of a, a weird sleep schedule today, so I had a bit of a power nap this afternoon. Uh, but obviously, because I'm based in the UK, uh, the time is a little different for me, so it's actually, th it's 3 a.m. for me here, but I believe in Brazil, it's something like 9, 10 p.m. So it's a little bit earlier for you guys. That said, a great smoke. Play to the right-hand side of it, use the molly to force him out of position, you get him up on top of the van. Leads to a lovely early kill. Again, though, the bomb, you've got the B-site, but the bomb is top mid. That's unfortunate. Thankfully, it's just pistols in play, so Falco can't really capitalize on it. Ooh, that's a crafty one. Del Buddy had it again. Oh, buddy! Back to back one digs. The P250 now gets the dink as well. Gonna finish it off with a couple of bullets as a flurry of kills come in towards B. This is where the bomb not being on the site actually kind of helps out because Mayon can plant it over on A. It's going to be a little bit of an issue. Let's see what he can do, though. Bomb has gone down. Quite an unfortunate 1v4, and that doesn't even get the first kill. And it's just by the by. Martin, thanks for the heads up. I think I've just fixed it for you. It's just uh, a habit of getting a little too close. So uh, let me know if it's any better. I've just sort of tweaked the setting on my mixer as well. So hopefully it shouldn't peak anymore, but it's just because I get really nice and close to my microphone, just like this. And that can be a little bit problematic at times because, you know, we're getting into the game and uh, sometimes I lose track of, of where the microphone is. So I'll, I'll try and sit back a little bit. So the, the, uh, the microphone doesn't get any buzzy for you guys. I need to position it better, to be honest. I'm going to build a new desk tomorrow, I think. That will hopefully use the new mic stand I've got. And that will mean it's hanging down in front of me. So it's a bit easier to... Uh, uh, not, like, basically eat the microphone, right? Because it's kind of a vertical stand. It comes across the desk right now instead of down and above. So. But yeah, Martin, it should be solved. Thanks for the heads up, buddy. With that said, SMG's on B, that is the answer. What can it do? Well, there's the result. Noxy finds Del Buddy. His teammate finds Guto. The Mac 10's rain into market. They pick up some apples and oranges. Now it's just BLD. He's taken down and wham bam. It's a 10-5 half. For Asuras, I think they're in a great position at the end of the day. You know, after... What is it? I think it's DS Cinco, 10-5 half. Yeah, I know a little a little bit. I'm, again, leaning on that, like, two weeks of Spanish that I did. Um, but yeah, after a 10-5 half, I think they're going to be feeling pretty confident going onto their CT side. Again, Mirage is kind of like one of their textbook maps. 
one of their most played, certainly within their top three in terms of best maps of the team as well. So I do feel like they'll be in the comfort zone here to try and close this one out. Let's see what's going to happen though, already. So get a bit of presence put in towards ramp as they do try and push out. Baiting all of those rotations if they can towards A, but little do they know. Asurus, they've not bitten onto it at all. It's going to come down to the quick and dirty jewels on this B site. BLD is going to be good for one though. The CT side have to spike back, but Mayon, oh man, the juicy one taps. He hits him again. BLD will trade, but will it be enough? Numerito going to hit one of his own, takes down Lato, that brings us full circle, back to a 3v3, another one tap as we hit the deck, it's back at the fourth galore, Scream will be pretty proud right now of what he's witnessing, as Mayan will close it out with a triple kill to bring us over the line to 11 rounds, but that was mental, constant one taps from both teams respectively as we trade from 3v3 to 2v2. The result will favour Asurus, and that is huge, talk about starting on the right foot forward, as he want to sprint to close out Mirage. Oh, what a nade. That is a godlike nade. <laughs> so much damage done. What's that? I'd say there's probably 220 HP worth of damage done. Huge nade. Lato will be able to Glock himself one, but unfortunately, he isn't going to get a daze anyone else anytime soon. Man's all just going to clean things up. see a little bit of excitement, but nothing too crazy. Maybe a BLD can land some back-to-back -back 1Ds here. Just so you know, in Spanish the vowels make only one sound. I need to scroll up and see this. I feel like this is like some real insightful information. So just so you know, in Spanish the vowels make only one sound each. I'm not going to give it a try, but I feel like I understand where you're coming from. It's good, good examples though. Tom Play 2016, thank you buddy. I really should take like a, a language course or something, learn a language. I was going to try and learn Swedish last year, then I told myself this year at New Year's I'd learn Chinese. And well, you can all see how well that's gone. Um, maybe maybe Spanish should be the language that I learn. So that or, or Portuguese, but I feel like Portuguese is incredibly difficult. But uh, I th I'm sure Spanish is as well. I tell you what, French was, was a nightmare, but I had to do an exam in French at school. That was pretty rough. But at least I can, I can semi-speak French. Not, not well, but like it's... It's pa more passable than my Spanish, let's put it like that. <laughs> 12 5. Falco running out of chances. They need to perform well here in round 18 if they want to hang on. Not too bad of a start, but still the advantage. Potentially claw back. Guto is still selling up just 2 HP after all. Gonna spot heat and be able to trade for that kill. If he gets a double kill here, finding Devoni, that could be an issue, but thankfully Lato cleans up from behind. His position in jungle just supreme there. That allows his team to push out on towards A and secure a bomb plant as well. Now the only curveball could well be reversive if they don't know he's coming in through ramp. Give him a free kill. Could be valuable, of course, that is gonna give him an AK rather than the UMP. However, the positions are good. Shadow and Jungle Crossfire. He has to take one of the jewels, and as he takes the other, he's going to be shot in a perfect 180 angle from where he's currently standing, which... Uh, you've got to be some Nico-style player to land that shot. Let's put it like that. So, great positioning means that Falco will hang on for just another round. The scoreline sits 12-6. It's going to be a pretty clean round. 
Might even be able to finish him off with the nade. Let's volley a couple of shots with the AK through the wall. Should clean things up. Yeah, there you go. I feel like uh, Ibzil is, is pretty much summed up like different languages though. Like a lot of languages are just, they have different dialects which makes each language like it's it just, it's so different in terms of the dialects and the way you have to learn it. So I think every language is difficult in its own way. But I would say like from a, I think from a British accent point of view, copying it over is a little easier I think Spanish than say for example like uh, Chinese, for example, I, I typically find like the dialects there are a little harder to get the, the pronunciations right, like the rolling, the rolling vowels and that sort of thing. Two of the things that are rolling. Heat is just straight on into CT. Lovely headshot on towards reversive means BLD can wrap that up as well. And Falco, they're actually back in this one. That was a, a very clear cut round for them. They walked out on towards A. They took all of the contacts where appropriate, killing off a player in jungle and such, clearing out CT, gathering the bomb plant. All the pieces were there for success, and, well, they combined them out, they got themselves an eighth round, and now we're only four rounds away from a 12-12 scoreline. And we look at the economy of Asiris, the fact they're broken again, really bodes well for this T-side. Aggression works out pretty well. Doubling will overextend a little bit. I think after the double might be a good time to just call it quits, back away. That will give up an AK, but I don't imagine much more will be done with it. No Kevlar behind it after all. We'll actually see a fair bit of damage done, but still not sure if I'll see the win condition here. Lato so does have the bomb in his hand, should go for a plant here if possible. Man, we'll use that as his opportunity to get out onto the site itself now. First kill comes fairly easily. Will the second come through? The answer is no. A simple headshot will lock out the round, even grabbing the AWP on the exit. Pretty critical round now. Will decide if Falcal really are able to bring the fight here. Swapping around the AWP, throwing it over to Lato, which is fairly standard. Moxie, meanwhile, using the AWP on that CT side to get aggressive through mid, and it works out rather well on the first shot. Second shot, not so much. That missed opportunity. Could well open up now a chance for Gouda to do some work. Well, he's only good for one as the trade will be found, but nonetheless, that's still a pretty valuable kill. The only issue is heat's down to 4 HP as well, which just means that as more and more people fall, the round becomes that even little bit tougher. Now, cake's in point now, they've just lost you know, BLD. That means it's just heat on 4 HP and on Lato as well, up against 4. HP is one of those things which you don't realise how powerful it is until it's gone. You think, oh, I'm still standing, although it might be 50 HP. And that 50 HP is actually quite critical. But once you get into that red zone, when you're, you know, the, the bottom left bar turns red, for example, or you get below sort of 20 HP, that's when things become really quite problematic. It is just now. He, on his own. Very little chance here. He's going to have to rely on, on the perfect headshot, to be honest. He does have a molly and flash, though, which could, well, create an opportunity for him.
unfortunately, we will just run out of time. And that brings that round to a close. Let's see, uh, we had a question, I just didn't quite see it. Uh... Where you got to tag uh, the easy way to do it when chat's moving is I'm not logged in on, on my Twitch account. Obviously, I'm logged in on the uh, the Starlight of Twitch account. So if you tag at Starlight of CS underscore two, I'll I'll see the message. Otherwise, I have to kind of look through the, uh, the the Twitch chat, which can be a little difficult at times when we're uh, witnessing some pretty sweet CS. But Julian Cop asks, what do you think the series could do to improve? Well, uh, those Mitchells could be a little better. <laughs> Good timing, Lado just swung out, of course, putting in the work. Noxie getting another kill as well, that's huge. Reverse if dropping an underpass, that's a little messy. Frag after frag being given up right now. Two foul goal, but Masiris will hang on. Creating the 3v3 now. I want to grab the bomb and I imagine just scurry back over towards top mid, keep it safe for now. Which makes sense. If Delbony peeks here, that's going to be an issue because it will pretty much give up a kill. But thankfully, Noxie has the intuition to smoke it off rather than take the duel. And that works out quite, quite well for Noxie, to be honest, because he doesn't want to show face yet. He needs to really wait, wait for his position, or his teammate's position to make a bit more sense. E.g. Lato. But also, I think BLD as well, right? The bomb's so far away, you got to be careful here. Now, Lato will get a pretty sick flick on Leon. That will prompt them to push now. Noxie in towards CT, of course. He's just got a slow PK manager round through the corner. Reverse it might just hold the jungle cross. Looks like they might even just try and plant for ramp and, and not take any of the jewels at all. We'll have to see Noxie gonna creep through. Spots one, flicks up and through, uses the smoke to his advantage, hits for two. Noxie, are you kidding me? He's hit every single shot that's needed of him and created a 1v1. The bomb has been picked up by Delbody, but he's got a cross to the site as well. Reversive is aware of that, spots him on the cross now. Little time left, 20 seconds on the clock. Delbody knows he has to get that bomb down. Baiting the time, 15 seconds remain, still yet to commit. Now crosses once more, caught in the air, but no kill. How is he still standing? Seven seconds remain. Going to try and force the plant now. And there he does it. Shows his head. Reversive mops it up. Asurus, they find their 14th, but my god, it was close. Now, going back to the question on Osiris and what could they do to improve, I, I honestly, I think they could do with a little bit more time just uh, sort of in the practice area, refining a couple of things. They've made some great progress sort of since January, you know. They had their, what, second to worst, as a, as, a, as a core team, they had their second to worst slump. I think it was like late January. Um, yeah, like around the 21st of January, they had their worst world ranking second world was ranking of all time only worse was was uh, ranked 226 way back in sort of like january 2017 so january 2019 was a bit of a wake-up call i think um but from there it's been consistently rising you know they had a good run that put them up to 125 in the world and from there it's been yeah it's a consistent uptick to where now i believe they're ranked 33 um, and a lot of that really comes from just getting solid results at tournaments i think if they could broaden their map pool a little bit more that would also be quite valuable for them but We'll have to see how that pans out. Obviously, great results at areas like Dreamhack Dallas, the ESL Pro League, a ninth attempt finish there. But you know the big ones are either qualifying for, I believe they qualified for Rio. Um, so it's a really solid results overall. It definitely helped them out. With that said, let's not miss out on this round. The retake is well and truly on. Noxie will pick up one. It will be Numerito to jump over on towards Tetris to finish things off. That will put us now up onto series point. And Cirrus looked to close this one out two to zero. Nice deep nade again. Same sort of style of play from Rasurus. Send someone close up mid if possible. Maxu would have to join him as well. Just really trying to bag that early frag if possible. Noxie, meanwhile, putting in the work underpass, but doesn't expect to be instantly traded. Having a second play there just catches him by surprise. 
Big kill for Guto and for Delboni. We'll put Falco in a, a decisive position here. The only presence from Rasuras comes in from Connector and Biaps now, which is just not quite what they want, I imagine. Would be a good kill at least for Guto, but just instantly traded. Doesn't really matter too much, as it's still a 1v3 in the end. Does Mayan have a chance? Uh, I think with the smoke, that will pretty much uh, seal it. I mean, we are going to try and see if we can swap him. That would be pretty good. But let's see. He's got himself up towards Khan. If he can get to maybe stairs or even jungle, work, him, work his way up through bench. Just going to need to clear out jungle, of course. Yeah, it doesn't quite work out. In the end, he will be taken down. Arkel hanging on for just one more round. Got to take it round by round, I think, at this point. That's going to be the main thing. But yeah, going back to Asurus, I think it's... Uh, good. They're in a great form right now. They're on probably their... I mean, is it their best form of their life? I think, from a, a ranking point of view? Let me let me have a look. I can actually check this. Have it open on, on one of my monitors. Yeah, it's by far the, the best form of their life right now. They are. They're dominating. Um, so I think what we've got to see is... How well they do in the minor. Um, obviously, they're going to be looking for the victory in the Brazil Game Cup. I think that's going to be a big one as well. Um, making sure they take that home. It's great practice again for them against other South American opposition. Um, you know, particularly going to be looking forward to those matches against teams like W7M um, and also against you know, lineups like Inflames as well. I think that could provide quite a good opportunity. Um, but yeah, it's just going to be coming down to broadening their map pool. With that said, the scoreline comes to, uh, I think, quite expected close, 16-10. We saw a couple of nice moments here and there from the T side, but the problem was they didn't really have enough rounds to work with. You know, we saw a good core of four come in at round 17 or through round 21, but the consistency wasn't there, and also they had no room to make mistakes because of how the first half unfolded, which is just a, a byproduct of it being Mirage. It's a great map for a source, a place where they do feel really at home, and... Unfortunately today, it meant that Falco could not best them on it. It was a 2-0 series. Their road here to the minor has ended. Asuras will continue to move on. And the team they will face... Well, let's see. Do we have an idea yet? It depends on the outcome of the 9Z vs W7M match, which... I can't see on the match ticker of HLTV, which makes me think it is over. Oh, it's not. That is an incredible game. 25-21 in match.